Hey guys, I'm here with the Buchla Music Easel today, and I'm gonna be talking about a hack that you can do on the Buchla Music Easel Modern. This is the modern variant of Music Easel. When Buchla brought back the Music Easel a couple of years ago, they brought back the modern version, which I have here, and then the retro, which I'll put a picture of on screen when I edit this video. The modern version specifically has this electric music box I.O. module in the upper left. For short, it's called the MBO, and it's got some I.O. on the side, a little submixer for audio, a slew processor, an extra LFO, and an attenuverter, but it also has this little wildcard window here. And when Buchla came up with the idea of doing the MBO module, they thought, well, why don't we make it hackable so that down the line people can sort of customize and really make this instrument their own. And so this video is gonna cover a hack that you can do to your MBO that basically adds a stereo effect return or sort of a way to splice in and make your audio stereo uh, before it reaches these main outputs here. So a little bit of background on why this works and why this might interest you if you wanna mod your music easel. The audio in a music easel is basically mono, but it's dual mono. The reason for that is during the development of the 208C, which is the modern variant of the 208 voice here, it was thought that at one point they might add a stereo DSP reverb, but in the final production version that's being made today, there is a mono spring reverb inside. Now the audio signal path inside is still stereo, and that's what we're going to be splicing into, and that's sort of a remnant of that time period where it was thought that maybe there'd be a stereo DSP reverb in here. These outputs here are dual mono, and you can sort of imagine them behind the front panel normal to go to the MBO. And then the headphone here is sort of just the end of the signal path of the 208C. So just a little caveat before we get started, this headphone output is just the output of the 208C, and the insert that we're going to be creating here is post the headphones. So the stereo output is going to be present on these quarter inch outputs, but not present on the headphone output over here. So let's get started and uh, I'll tell you what you need to do this mod. I have created this little wiring harness, and this is the entire mod right here. Basically, you have two little Molex connectors and two Switchcraft Tiny Jacks. Now these are three pin Tiny Jacks, and the third pin is a shunt pin. And what that basically does is it's not a stereo jack, even though there's three contacts. The shunt pin basically takes a signal and normals it from the input to the output when no plug is present in this jack. So the way that works is there's a little spring here, and when there's no tiny plug in this jack, uh, it's making contact with the sort of, you can think of it as the output pin. But when a plug is inserted into the jack, it pushes that away and breaks that connection, that electrical connection. And you can think of it as creating a normal and then breaking the normal when you plug a tiny cable in here. And then the audio from the tiny cable instead of the normal audio is then being sent to wherever the destination is. So the way this is soldered is pretty simple. I have the ground wire basically going to this pin on the tiny jacks, and then each side of the signal, left and right, in this case purple and brown, uh, are going through each of the jacks. So the audio from the male Molex connector is going to the middle pin, and that is the shunt pin, right? Because this is the connector that's going to plug into the output of the 208C. And then this other pin over here, which you can think of as sort of the output pin, is going to the female Molex connector. And I'm gonna show you guys a way that you can do this mod for like 20 bucks in parts, and it's really, really easy. And if you don't know how to solder or you're not confident in your soldering abilities, grab a buddy, uh, somebody knows how to solder, or talk to your synth tech and say, hey, can you do this mod for me? But I think this mod maybe not is not gonna be for everybody because it's useful for me because I like to do things in the stereo realm in the music easel, but maybe not everybody is gonna do stuff in stereo within their music easel. Somebody might send it to a mixer and pan it, or you might use stereo effects outside of your music easel. But this mod is going to make it possible for you to create stereo signals within your music easel and then send them to the main mix here. So, in the MBO there are these two oval holes and those are designed to not be for anything specific, 
but to sort of be useful as sort of a Swiss Army knife. You could put a jack, you could put a knob, you could put a banana jack, you could even put a switch in these oval holes. And so that's what we're gonna be using to mount these. So let's start by removing the MBO, and I'll talk about the connections that make this mod possible. And it's just these four Phillips screws. And we're gonna have to remove the light box temporarily from the MBO, but that's pretty easy as well. And just while we're over here, I also have a 292C Classic in my extra module slot. That's what I'm currently using to do sort of stereo panning, because you can send an audio signal into two channels of it and then modify the um, amplitude of the signal on left and right and then go into these inserts. So we'll talk about applications for this mod. Let's remove the MBO very gently. You can actually place it on its side here because of the PCB backer board here that is protecting the back of the PCB. And then we can see sort of the connections in here. There's a lot of unused connections. The MBO was intended to be modded, so there's lots of stuff going on that you can access, which makes it usable and, and moddable. So this connection right here is the audio coming from the 208C. This cable extends through the easel and connects to the back of the 208C around here in the output section. And you'll notice this Molex connector connects to this connector in my little wiring harness for the mod. So we again have our ground and then our left and right dual mono audio coming out of the 208C. So let's put that aside. And then we're going to disconnect this H power cable, which basically just provides power to the light box when the MBO is turned on. And we're also going to unscrew, put that back in here for the time being, unscrew the light box from the front of the MBO. And now we have the light box and its top panel separated from the MBO. And this board is basically just a bunch of LEDs and it sits below the top plate of the light box. And this is the only destructive thing we're going to do for this mod. It is going to be, I have a spare one here, um, but we're gonna snap this little perforated section of the board in order to make room so that's not covering up the two little oval holes. And snap that, just uh, very gently apply force. And now we still have the top plate of the light box and we can actually just reinstall that right now. All right, so our light box is back in place and we freed up these two oval holes to receive the jacks that we're going to use for this mod. So I'm going to make sure that I have my nut, my washer, and then my lock washer for both of the jacks. And we're gonna put the lock washer below the panel. This is gonna be a little tricky. And then above the panel, we're gonna put our washer on. And then we're gonna tighten this. And we'll just do hand tightness for now. And uh, I'll come back later with a hex and torque those down. So now we can see inside, we've got those two jacks. We're gonna go fishing for the audio cable from our 208C and we're gonna plug that into the input of our mod, and then the output of our mod is going to go into the input of the MBO that goes to the main mix. And the last thing we're gonna do is reconnect the H power cable to the light box. And that is essentially the whole mod. So what this basically has added is two stereo jacks, and because we use the shunt pin to create a normal from the 208C audio, when nothing's plugged into these jacks, the easel behaves identically to when it is stock from the factory. But when you plug into these jacks, it breaks the normal from here, and uh, each side has an input that is separate. 
So those audio paths are then mixed with this little mixer output here, and then they go to these quarter inch outputs. So say if you had your audio coming from your 208C into two channels of the 292, and then you were modulating the two channels amplitude through the low pass gate differently, like something that I like to do is take an LFO, go into one channel, take the same LFO, invert it, go to the other channel, and so I have them sort of LFOing opposite each other, and then I take the audio and go in here, and then I have a left to right sort of tremolo pan going on, or you could use the random output, and you don't also need to invert it, you could just take two of the randoms and go into the amplitude here and just have random panning to create sort of a spatial effect. So I'm going to screw the MBO back in because the mod is complete, and then we'll just talk about creating the wiring harness that you need for this mod. So it's very simple and you can actually use an off-the-shelf component that I found because those Molex connectors are a little bit tricky. All right, now that our MBO is back in place, the mod is complete, but let's talk about what you'd have to do to prepare that little wiring harness. So we talked about the two Switchcraft Tiny Jacks, three pin, the third pin being the shunt pin. Um, let's talk about the little Molex connectors. These can be really tricky, but there is an off the shelf little fan power adapter that I think this is for gaming computers or something. And what it basically is, is one of these female Molex connectors and two male Molex connectors coming off the end. This adapter costs like $4, so it's literally more cost effective to just buy this and cannibalize it for the connectors and the wire than it is to buy wire and buy Molex connectors and do it separately. So it's super easy. What we're gonna do is leave one of the splits and then cut these other three flush. And then we're going to cut this about an inch back from here because we want an inch extra of this black wire. And um, then we're gonna solder it up. I'll put a close up in the video that explains the soldering. So I wanted to provide you guys with a little close up of how the jacks are soldered. See the ground coming in from the male Molex is going to the ground pin on these. And then the audio coming from the 208C, which is on this little male Molex is going to the shunt pin, which is that middle pin. And then the output pin is that pin on the left. So make sure you orient your pins correctly. And it's uh, the same for both channels. And I've just sort of bridged the ground over here with that extra little inch of black wire that uh, you'll be able to harvest from that wiring harness. And uh, your mod will actually be longer than mine because when I made this, I just made it out of wire that I had in stock and made it a little too short, honestly, for comfort. But uh, with this, You'll have plenty of extra wire to mess around with. You could even maybe mess up and then fix your mess up and have plenty to work with. And, uh, and that's basically it. So for five bucks or six or seven bucks per tiny jack and this little $4 Molex splitter for fans that you can get on Amazon, you have a mod for the Music Easel MBO that adds a stereo effect insert or return on the MBO that you can now do modulated panning if you use a module like a 292 or something like that. So if this mod helps you or if you have questions, let me know in the comments and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video.